Hello, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I'm going to focus on Moodle, which is our online classroom interface that we use. And today I want to create a quiz in Moodle. So let me go down to um, pick this class, for instance, and let me develop a quiz for them. So I'll go down to Add an Activity, and from the drop down menu, I'll select quiz and we'll name the quiz I'll just call it quiz on chapter 10 this is obviously what they're gonna see in the link was on chapter 10 I will let them know that they have two attempts it's timed uh, for 10 minutes And that is also due in by uh, March, um, I should say Tuesday, March 27. Okay, and I'll do a uh, Control A to select all that and Control C to copy it. Then down here I will put uh, control V which is to paste it in there and then just A for allowing that to go in. It's up to you how many attempts you want them to have as you'll see in a minute. It says uh, on timing open the quiz, close the quiz. Those are normally disabled so uncheck those if you would like to assign a time range there or a date range. Um, I'm gonna close it out, close the quiz March 27th um, at 11.55 p.m., which I do need to go back and add that. 11.55 p.m. is like the, the latest you can go. There's no midnight selection, so it is in military time. That's why I'm selecting 23, hour 23, which is 11 p.m., and then 55 minutes. And let me just indicate that up here as well. Dubai, and let me just put that also in there, 11 55 p.m. for their final attempt. And I can put it in here too. And uh, time limit. I'm going to enable that for 10 minutes so that they kind of have to know the material before they go into it. Because I usually give them 10 questions. And you can set a delay between first and second attempt if you want. I do not do that, however. Um, display it. Uh, questions per page. I keep to unlimited. Shuffle questions. Um, I say no, but then shuffle within questions. That's a yes, because what I like to do is keep the questions in the same order, but the, an the possible answers, like multiple choice, will be all shuffled around every time they hit it. Um, attempts allowed. Uh, I will give them two and I just keep those at the defaults and I scroll all the way down save and return to course so the initial link is there now typically while I'm underway building it um, I will hide it from them and then when I'm totally done with the quiz I'll, I'll unhide it so let me hide it for now just for their eyes but yet I can still work on it now I'll click on it the link and it takes me to this area where I can build the quiz on the right left side it says questions in this quiz well I haven't added any questions yet but when I do they'll show up over here then we have our um, area over here where we can actually pick what type of question we want um, whoops I'm sorry this one up here create new question choose what kind do you want you want multiple choice short answer true and false um, true and false and multiple choice is pretty much what I work with and um, before that though the category now I typically change this because it's never what I want it to be up here I don't know why it doesn't automatically put it in but um, I'll choose the one I just created default for quiz on chapter 10 to attempts I'll click on that have that in there so let me choose a format for the question let me do multiple choice now the question name I'll just pull one out of here that I um, might do if you 
mix 100% red, 100% green, 100% blue in the RGB spectrum, um, you will get, well this is a web desi design question so I'm going to put a blank there. I want them to come up with the right word for the blank. And the answer will be white. The right answer. Alright, so I've built the question. I'm going to do a control A, control C to copy it, and a control V to put it down here, which is paste. And then I'll just hit the A button to make it pop in down there. Of course you can use your copy and paste just like you normally do with right clicking. Preview my question there. Alright, now uh, that's just general feedback area. I don't necessarily put anything in there. Uh, one or multiple answers. Well, there's only one right answer. That's what it's asking you there. Shuffle the choices. Yeah, I have it checked. And I did that early on. And number the choices. I've, that format's fine. Uh, my first choice one, the answer, um, I can put the right answer first. It doesn't matter because it's going to shuffle it anyway. Uh, the right answer is white. Now, if that's the right answer, the grade, you need to change it from none to 100%. And what kind of feedback do you want to give them? Well, I want to tell them it's correct and put an exclamation point. Choice two, let's put some bogus answers in there. So we'll say black. And grade, you can leave it at none, no points awarded for wrong answer. So we'll change that to incorrect for that feedback if they pick that one. And uh, put a gray. Again, that's a wrong answer, so the grade is none. And again, we'll do incorrect again. And choice four. I typically do four multiple with multiple choice. Um, I'll say blank. Try to come up with you know good almost answers, just to make sure they know what they're talking about. Again, grade should be none, and I'll say incorrect there as well. Choice 5 is here. I don't fill it out. I can ask for more choices even. I don't need all that. I don't really need overall feedback. I've already said I want it, what I want it to say for for uh, if it's correct or incorrect. There's no partial corrects with me. So I'm going to save changes. And when you save changes, it comes back to this screen. And there's an action phase. It has the question listed here in green. And if you want that one to go over to the questions in this quiz area over here on the left, then you click the little double arrows and it sends that question over there. And it looks a little bit formatted, a little funny, but it'll add all your questions here eventually. Get them all there. Okay. And you can also delete them and move them. But um, I'm just ready now to start question two. Um, let me try to come up with a true and false idea. So here's, let me choose true and false, which are a little bit easier, a little bit quicker, let's just say. Mm, all right. Let me make this um, a question. It's a good idea to specify font alternatives in your font family. CSS property. In case your users don't have your preferred font installed. True or false? Control A to select all. Control C to copy it. Control, get down here, Control V as in Victor, and then just do the A on your keyboard to allow access. That way you don't have to grab the mouse except to click down here, but you could probably tab down too. So let me review my question. Okay. All right. So this is true and false. Remember, um, this is just general feedback. I don't usually fill general feedback in. Now, correct answer. Don't overlook this. Correct answer actually is um, true. So then you go down. What's the proper feedback for the response? True. Well, in this case, uh, that would be correct. That would be a correct answer. And then the feedback for the response false. Well, that would be an incorrect answer and that's it and just hit save changes and that gives you a true and false question to add to this same quiz and again it's in grain and you can click the double arrow or the double vector there to make it go over to the questions in this quiz so let me click on that those question two and you just keep adding and adding and adding so 
um, obviously I go for 10 questions, uh, 10 points. Um, you know, let me make sure I did one thing here. And this is how you edit it. If you think you might have done something wrong or didn't fill something out correctly, you can always go back to um, edit it here or you can actually edit it over here. I think I forgot something, so let me go back and check that out. So I can edit the question. I think I forgot to assign a value. And maybe it's just I don't have to in true and false, since I've already notated what is true. Yeah, it didn't ask me for a grade on these, so I just it's just not necessary on this. So um, again, let me save changes there. And so it was OK after all. It's just with multiple choice I have to say none or give it a 100% grade. All right, so that's already over there. and. Very important, always hit Save Changes on the left side where it says Save Changes for the questions that you've added to the quiz. Otherwise, it, it will not stay there. Now, um, you can preview. Once you've got all your questions in, maybe it'll let me preview the ones I've done. Let me hit the Preview button. And so it, it, the timer starts for the 10 minutes that I've set. And it says if you it, I can ask my question, see my choices. And uh, the answer was white. As soon as I hit submit, it should give them feedback, like correct, and it gives them a point. Uh, the next one was a true and false question. The answer, right answer was true. Submit. OK. I'll just save without submitting. I can start it again. Let's say if I pick the wrong answer, what kind of response or feedback do they get? I'll say, um, whoops, it's hard not to pick the right one. Let's pick blank. I'll pick blank this time to be wrong. Submit, and it tells them it's incorrect. It puts a red X up there. And next question pops up. So yeah, I say false, submit. It tells them it's incorrect and puts a red X there. So they should have no problem understanding they got, the, they got it wrong. And so that's two ways to do that. If you want to go back and edit, just click on the Edit tab. And you're right back adding to, to the point where you can add some more questions if you want. And that should do it for today. Thank you.